Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Hello Dave, we're gonna try to keep it short this week. Quickly, I just want to talk about Christmas and the next coming two weeks. Um, because of all the Christmas holidays, I'm not really sure about release schedules and how that's gonna work, so don't expect videos to come out at the same times as usual. Some live streams may be moved around, I don't know, the one tomorrow is still at its usual spot, but I think I'll try to get more live streams out or maybe fewer videos, because it's gonna be more of a... Whenever I have time thing, which is why the next two weeks I can't really commit to a, to a schedule because I'm going to prioritize my time and spend time with friends and family here over the over the holiday. So just so you know, next two weeks until the next year, just videos maybe fewer. Maybe there's going to be more live streams. Exactly when, I don't know, keep yourself updated on Discord. I'm going to be posting over there when I'm going to go live. Moving on quickly to the Terra X update. Things are pretty quiet around the Terra X systems. Things are progressing as uh, as expected. Obviously things are moving a little slower with a lot of resources being allocated over to Project Greenfield. But of course we are very grateful for everybody helping out with that project, which is also progressing um, as planned. We now have Terra X in the second place. We have a good gap up to the code, move them up a bit. And now we're shoveling things around with the lower factions, all the other factions, moving settlements around as planned. So everything is progressing according to plan, looks really, really good. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody involved for the time you spend helping with these products, projects, whether you are doing Terra X stuff, whether you're doing Project Greenfield. Huge thank you, thumbs up, very much appreciated. Last Thursday, Frontier hosted a end of the year Christmas live stream where they did show us some additional things about the Fleet Care interiors. First of all, Fleet Care interiors has been moved from update 10 to 11. Exactly when update 11 is going to be, I don't know, but usually they have a month, a month and a half between updates. Update 10 is expected to be by early next year, mid-January, something like that. So we can probably expect to see update 11, let's say mid-February, end February, those that kind of areas, when I expect we're going to see update 11 and therefore also the three carry interiors. The modules we are going to get in there, well, a lot of them are as we expect um, with the shipyard and those kind of things. Some of them are a little interesting, like the... Suit and um, like pirate supply where you sell suits and weapons is going to work slightly different than the shipyard. When the shipyard, you have to go buy a pack and then you get a pack of, like, let's say, fire that ship. And when somebody buys, you have four left. And then when you're out, you have to go and buy more. And that's not how it's going to work with suits and weapons. Once you have the pioneer supply installed, it's going to have an unlimited stock. Frontier's argument here is that while a sidewinder would take up a significant amount of space in a hangar, if you fill up the same volume with personal weapons, you could have a lot of personal weapons, and, and that means that taking up internal space for the for the suits and weapons doesn't really make a ton of sense. Um, and therefore, they just decided to give us unlimited supply for that, which is nice. And you can, of course, still put up a tariff so you make a little bit of profit when you sell it, or you can just sell it at market price if that's what you want to do. But the most interesting one, I think, is the bartender, because the bartender is going to work as a commodity market. And that means we're going to be able to set up buy and sell orders for on-foot engineering materials. That is huge. This is going to be the first time we're going to be able to directly trade materials for money, set it up on a market. I mean, we can already like drop them to the ground and people can pick them up and those kind of things. But this is going to be massive. And especially because there is no NPC market to kind of control this flow. Normally, with all the other materials we can sell on fleet carriers today, there is an NPC market and people would often buy or sell to a fleet carrier based on what they can get on the NPC market. But if that's not the case here, I know you can sell engineering materials to the bartender, but those prices, I don't think, is going to determine the prices that we're going to see when people trade commander to commander. I think those prices are going to be significantly higher because the time it takes to collect these materials versus how much you actually want to get for them. So... Especially the rare ones are going to be very, very valuable, I think, and it's going to be sold for pretty high prices. So there's some good money, I think, to be made here by collecting these materials. And it might be a completely new revenue stream for fleet carrier owners to go out, collect Odyssey-related materials, put them up for sale on fleet carriers, and just make money that way. I think that could potentially be a viable, but it's going to be interesting to see. And I think especially in the beginning, we're going to see huge price fluctuations until the market kind of settles in and figure out what people want to pay for it and what people are willing to to sell them for and that those kind of things uh, settle in as, as they do. But that's going to be interesting. I'm very much looking forward to seeing how that plays out. Over in Star Citizen, we still have update 316 in PTU. Some people begin to speculate whether it's going to come out this week if, if they want to get it out before Christmas or if they're going to wait until next year. Personally, I don't think they're going to put it out between Christmas and New Year's. There's 
often if people are off vacation, you want to have people around. If, if it turns out it's completely bulk and you have a lot of bulk you need to fix quickly, then it's nice to have not everybody on vacation. So I think either they're going to do it now, um, really soon, or they are going to, uh, to wait until after New Year's. One of the interesting things is we got a new ship coming with update 316, which is the Cutlass Steel, the Drake Cutlass Steel. Now we already have three variants of the Cutlass. We have the black for combat, the red for search and rescue, and we have the blue for police type work. But with the steel, we now get a um, surface assault ship. Um, it's gonna have on the side doors, it's gonna have like machine guns you can flip out and you're gonna have people standing there with these machine guns and lay down fire for people below. It's gonna have two in each side. So you have the two side doors and each of them is gonna have two machine guns that you can sit. So there's gonna be a huge amount of fire you can put out of that. And then it's gonna have, I think, 16 seating spaces on the on the rear compartment of the ship. So you can have 16 of your friends sitting in there, some manning the guns, shooting down, laying down fire, as you're coming in and the idea with them of course is to be a vessel designed around the new jump town events that if you're gonna go and attack a surface settlement then that's what it's kind of intended for you can come in you will have the machine guns you can use to uh, to suppress um, people on foot force them into cover or take them out completely and then you when you actually get the ship down it has enough firepower that it can defend itself and you can have the open up the rear ramp and you can just have people flood out of the ship and you can then assault the base. That is kind of the intended use for the Cutlass Steel, which is going to be really, really interesting. And um, it's going to be fun to see how people are going to begin to use that when the um, when the Jump Town events, Jump Town 2.0 comes into, uh, uh, into the live game. I also just want to mention that I am currently giving away a Drake Dragonfly over on Discord. With the changes in 316 to the grab left, I thought it would be fun to give out a... Um, a little thing to uh, to the community. So I'm giving away a Drake Dragonfly to a lucky winner. So you have to head over to Discord. Uh, you can find that at discord.d28.com. And if you don't go down to the, go down to the Star Citizen section, there's a Star Citizen giveaway channel. And in there, there's the giveaway. And you have to click that. And then on Christmas, I'm going to, uh, or the bot is going to draw a winner. And then you have yourself a new Drake Dragonfly, a little hover bike for you to, uh, to enjoy as a little extra Christmas present. Now, of course, if you don't have Star Citizen yet, then you can't really use this. So this is really only for people who already have the game or at least uh, intended to get the game at some point. Um, if you don't have Star Citizen, you can go to getstarcitizen.d2a.com if you're interested in that. And finally, the live stream tomorrow, we're going to be playing Elite. And I want to go and do the... There's a secret Christmas event running. I want to go and do that where we can unlock some uh, special cosmetics and stuff like that. I want to go and pick that up. That should be a lot of fun. Um, if I have extra time, because I don't think it's a too involved event, should be relatively easy to solve. If it's if I have extra time, I have some testing, um, some things I want to go and check out with the new uh, multi limpid controllers that I didn't get to check last time. So if we have spare time, we're going to do that. But the main focus is going to go and complete that Christmas event. And hopefully that should be a lot of fun. And I hope I'll see a lot of you guys there. As always, it's going to be at 8 o'clock GMT at YouTube as well as on Twitch. Thanks for watching. Also next time, I'll see you guys in space.